My name is Lilian Nyatome. I'm a senior nurse at the Nairobi Hospital, accident and emergency. I've worked here for the last 13 years, since 2007. So we'll report to work, uh, assume our roles. So we'll be allocated depending on the day's activities. You're either an emergency nurse or you are located at triage and specific other areas in the department, such as pro pro procedure, procedures. Mm -hmm. So I'll come in, take a brief report from the outgoing team where they'll be able to tell you how many patients are in the department and someone to be allocated to go out for the triaging at the tent. Mm -hmm. So we'll go to the tent, then from there that's where we are able to screen our patients depending on the symptoms that they present and the journey continues. So screening means asking them uh, history of travel asking them the symptoms they have, if they have any respiratory symptoms, such as cough. We take their temperature to rule out any fever and any contact recently with someone who is a suspect or a confirmed case of COVID-19. From there, that's when they're able to see the doctor from the tent. If they're supposed to go for screening, we take them to a specific ward where the samples is taken and they're either advised admission or advised to go home depending on the symptoms that they have. Then from there, the screening, when the results are, uh, are out, they're given a call, telephone call, where they're told to come to the hospital, their results were positive or negative. If positive, there's a facility we have where we're supposed to admit them uh, until their tests turn out negative. If it is negative, we tell them to go home so that they do self-quarantine for 14 days and watch for any symptoms. If they get any symptoms, then we advise them on what to do and they are able to come back to the facility for care to be continued. All patients that come to the hospital are screened. Every single person, even if it means a visitor coming to visit a person in the hospital, we screen them. They go through hand washing, we take their temperature, then they are able to be screened depending on the symptoms that they have. It's everyone, no exclusions. The hospital has provided us for PPEs. We are able to get a mask. We are able to get the overalls that we use. And among ourselves, we do trainings, uh, meaning we are able to educate someone on how to gown and degown before taking care of the patient. We do regular hand washing. Every point there is a tap where we do hand washing. We also do social uh, distancing where we keep one meter apart even if it is our colleague because everyone is uh, treated as a suspect unless otherwise confirm that you don't have the COVID-19. We'll be able to know you are a suspect by asking you the questions uh, at the triage either cough, fever, history of travel, contact, as I said earlier. From that, that's a definite suspect. Once we suspect the case, we are able to isolate them from the other patients or the other team members to avoid uh, if there is any transmission for them getting the disease if they have. Myself, I've come in contact. Uh, it was basically someone who had all the symptoms, including the cough, but I had all the PPEs, and we were able to take the client for screening. Therefore, I was not at risk because I had the proper gear that, uh, to protect myself. I'm trained. I've been provided for all the PPEs that I, I need, and therefore I'm not scared at all to meet with these people at this time. But initially, yes, the fear was there. You don't know who had it, and uh, before the cases came out, uh, like with the Ministry of Health, that these are the numbers that you have in the country, we didn't have who has, who doesn't have, who, which criteria should we follow. As per now, everyone is a suspect until proven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for now, I'm not scared at all. I'm well prepared, trained. Mm -hmm. I have enough PPEs at this time, yeah, so I can't complain. The hardest challenge I could say it's when you get these patients at the triage, some of them do not give 
all the information for you to say that this is a suspect, suspected case. Some could lie, not giving out all the information, like there was history of travel, which could add value to how we are treating these patients. Therefore, exposing all of us to the, the medical team and the other patients who are waiting to be seen. So if people in the society could be educated on the importance of saying the truth, and other, all other measures to prevent the pre uh, spread, such as hand hygiene and social distancing and staying at home, that could help the Kenya as a whole. I love seeing patients uh, get better and go home better than they came to hospital. That's what I like. I s it's, it's good God has given us uh, health and where you go and find that you can do something to help this person be better than they came to hospital, that's what I love about nursing. I need to give the nursing care that have been trained on and that I want to see someone get better. And at, at the end of it, it's not a death sentence that this is COVID and everyone is going to die out of it. Where we can save life, we can save our country. I'm afraid, uh, especially like when I go home, I have two babies, eight year old and a six year old. So when I get home, they actually ask me, Mami, you're from nursing the patients with COVID. So I try and explain to them that yes, I have been, but I've taken precautions for me not to get the disease and get it to them. For them, they're not afraid because they haven't gotten, uh, they haven't understood the, the COVID, what it really means. And like me, we scared sometimes and say, okay, wait, let me shower, then I come back, I'll say hi to you. So I, I keep explaining to them every single day so that they get to get the concept. It is not very easy, but it had, it had also started from school. They had been given uh, a few of the what it means. So it was like a continuation and letting them know every day this is what COVID-19 means and this is what you can do to prevent it. So sometimes they could even show you how to wash the hands. They'll ask where is my mask because they, they also want to use the same the way they see other people using the mask. But the, the thing is, they sometimes they ask, can we go and play out with our friends? But you keep telling them, at this time, it's not the right time until we are able to control the disease. But uh, at the end of it, they're giving me support because you get home, you shower first, then get to the family. But in terms of if, if I get the disease, for example, uh, the hospital has provided a place where you can quarantine for that period until you can test negative and go back to your family. Because once they test and it's negative, you are allowed to come back to, to work. So it's, it's, if it is God's plan that you are to get it in the line of duty and you have taken all the measures, then when it comes, you'll take it, work with it. Then we have counselors who, who also take us through counseling. So that has enabled us to keep pushing, keep pushing. My name is Sister Evelyn Osinde. I am a child nurse in St. Andrews and Short Stay Departments. I've worked in the Nairobi Hospital for the last 19 years. I am in the Short Stay Department, which is an isolation ward that have, have patients who are COVID positive. So on a regular day, I report to work at six, between 6.30 and 6.45. I get a morning brief from the outgoing team, the night team, who give us report of the patients who are in the department and their condition and the activities for the day. And after the outgoing shift have left, we organize an allocation of uh, the one who is in charge of the shift that uh, particular period and they, we allocate the patients to the nurses. Each nurse takes care of at least four patients. And then we start by calling the patients. Remember, they're in isolation, so we need to contact them and find out how their night was. And that contact is done by making calls to them. They, they all have their private mobile phones, and we, the numbers are with the nurses. We make individual calls to find out how their night was and find out what they require before we go in to see them because it's an isolation unit. 
And uh, after they've given us their orders for the day, my nurses, the ones who are going in, will go to the place where you're gowning, and we call that procedure donning, whereby they'll prepare themselves to gown and enter into the isolation area where the patient is. That is the patient environment with the needs of the patient. And after that, they will do the, the regular activities of the, of the day for the nurse, that is taking the temperatures, the pulse, the respirations, the blood pressures, the vital signs in general, and also giving them the drugs that are due. The doctors come in in the mid-morning and they require, they require also to gown and don and go into the patient environment and look after uh, and take uh, and do a round for each patient and find out how the patients are doing. There are many activities that happen in this ward. There are patients who require to be sampled, probably because they have stayed for 14 days. As you know, with, for COVID guidelines, on the 14th day you are supposed to be sampled. And depending on the results you get, if you get a negative, we do the, sec the third sampling. And if it's a negative, then you, are discharge, you discharge the patient. But if the patient is still positive, they are given the results and reassured and prepared for to stay another seven days until day 21 when they are resampled again. So that is one of the activities that we carry out with the doctors. The other activity is for those patients who require uh, other radiological examinations like chest x-rays. Depending on how the patients are presenting, you may require to order some radiological exams. You may require to repeat their hemoglobin levels, your white cell blood count. So that is individualized depending on how the patient has presented. Apart from that, there is also psychological care, which is very key for our patients. We must constantly reassure them that they, are, they need to be in isolation, that they need treatment, and also that they need to be patient. With COVID-19, patience is a must. So someone needs to understand that if you release them, even though they have no symptoms, they may go out there and, be, and infect others. So we must be very, very ready to reassure them and tell them what is the plan after a patient has turned positive. We also engage our counselors. We engage the psychiatrist, if need be, who constantly talk to the patient. They even have the, the, the Zoom, Zoom counseling sessions, individualized. The patients also have a way of uh, making themselves busy. They, 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 can, they can talk to each other so long as they keep the social distancing and they also put on their masks. So they're able to actually interact with each other and that also makes them to really feel like they are, they are not alone. They're in touch with their families. They're in touch with their, any other support system that they need. So all the time you must make sure that the patients are happy in their, in their isolation area. So as my supervisor, I also go in and prepare myself. I don't and go in and take around and see the patients and see the needs that they require and make sure that they are available. In an isolation ward, it will be very risky to allow anybody to come in and get into contact with the patient. So we explain to them up front before admission that the family members will not be allowed in because you know that for you to enter into a COVID environment, you must be in a well-prepared personal protective equipment. So that can be a challenge and also it can be scary for even the visitors who are coming. So we do not encourage people to come into an isolation area because we are actually putting them at risk. But so far we've had patients who are very, they, once you prepare them, they are ready from the word go to engage their family through the phones and through the Zoom uh, technology. Patients in isolation feel very, very disappointed. They feel like they, they are not, uh, they, why did it happen to them? Why did they have to be isolated? They, they initially, they are quite unhappy. So, but as we interact with them, and this is a normal uh, expectation, even us, if you're putting isolation for those, all those days, you might feel like you're you're losing it. So we, most of the time, we, we, the initial stages, patients really express that they are un unhappy and they wish that they could be allowed to even be at home in isolation. But as time goes by, they get, they get uh, used to the environment 
and they constantly look forward to the day that they turn negative so that they can move out. My best part of the day is to talk to the patient who is quarantined, who is isolated, who feels like they, 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 they have no other life. Out, I mean, they, they are not in touch with the real world. But when I talk to them, I feel very good because they're able to listen to me. They're able to, they're, 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 I'm, I'm able to, to, to tell them that they are doing well. I'm able to encourage them that they're not here for, for, for long. I'm able to tell them that they, they can do something that can make them happy being here so that they, it shortens their time of being here. So that talking to them every day makes me very happy because I, I see them getting better. And as I told you, they're able to interact. They even know who has gone home. So they, they, that makes them boost their morale. They know that one day they're also going to leave the premises. And as I've told you, I've had many success cases, and that has helped me going on. I have not experienced a very sick patient. Most of my patients are very stable, and they, they're actually on treatment, and they're doing very, very well. They have, some of them have symptoms like coughing, sneezing, but not very severe cases so far. I have had many patients who have turned negative and been discharged, and that is quite a, a, a good thing for me because I felt like I've, I've actually ac achieved something positive in COVID-19. So it's, a, it's, it's really something good when you see patients turning negative and discharging them to go home. So for me, I have hope that everyone in my ward at the moment will turn negative and go home. Before we even had our first patient in this hospital, there's been a lot of training on how to prepare. COVID-19 preparedness started long time, even before the first case was mentioned in Kenya. We've been having meetings, and uh, in those meetings, there's a lot of information that has been shared that made me psychologically prepared that if, a, if any patient walks in into our facility, we should be ready to look after them. So there are other trainings that we carry out, like making sure you have your PPEs, you've worn them right, and you're able to, uh, to remove them right without contaminating yourself. So we have been practicing from department to department. That has enabled us psychologically to be ready to deal with COVID-19 patients. COVID-19 is scary, I must say that. But again, if you know how it is transmitted, and you prepare yourself psychologically and also physically, I think you should not be afraid of contracting the virus. So for us, especially in the hospital, we are so keen about hand washing. In fact, long before even the COVID was here, hand washing has been our main, 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 main procedure because that is the only way you can risk transmission of, patient to, of, of, of infection from one person to another. So for us, it was just a reminder that these hands, which can kill, need to be washed several times. And this time, because we have a COVID-19 that is transmitted uh, th through droplets, that you need to prepare yourself. So for, for, for me, I feel that we, that practice that we have been doing for all isolation cases, not only for COVID-19, has prepared us as a hospital and has prepared me psychologically. And uh, I know that it's possible you can contract the virus even and in the line of duty, depending on uh, how you prepared you were probably that can happen if you are exposed to somebody who you did not know, so you are not in the right gear to, to, to when you are engaging with that person. But uh, if that happens, I am sure that I'll be taken care of in the same isolation unit and, and be ready, waiting for my resampling and start resampling until I turn negative to go home. I'm a mother of teenagers, so they are well aware of what COVID-19 is and how it is transmitted. And they are watching the news every other day, so they are quite informed. Eh? So what they do uh, when I get home, they, they have sanitizers. So they'll tell me, if, uh, before, I, 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 before I even get into the house, I sanitize my shoes, I sanitize the clothes that I have and my handbag, then get into the house, then go straight to the bathroom, take a shower, put on clean clothes, now I'm ready to. So it's, a t it's teamwork. The, my husband, my children, they're always there telling me, please, be, be clean. And even them, when they go out to, to buy anything on their back, they, that procedure is, is done to everyone. So we are well aware. It's so easy for them because they know how it's transmitted and they're able to, 
to support me not to contract it. And they will ask me how my day was and I will share with them. Yeah, and I think I'm, I'm, I'm quite okay with that support. Yeah.